today is like a demonstration of azure microsoft azure cloud and we are introducing a session uh, the next session we have for microsoft azure cloud so for that we are hosting the demo today so in the next weekend we are going to start the batch so admin team has advised me that uh, please go through with the demo and whatever doubts the candidates are having just clear that that's the reason this demo is happening so before i start with the session uh for your reference for your understanding i would like to give a brief intro about myself so my name is rajesh and basically i am from delhi uh, delhi is my base location and if you talk about my technical experience into it then it would be around uh, uh, you can say 8.6 years so currently i am working with uh, one of the company it's us based company and i cannot disclose the name actually Uh, because of the confidentiality agreement so i am working there as a technical solution architect whereby i am managing the azure infrastructure azure devops kubernetes open shift and orchestration in my past experiences i have worked with entity data entity data is one of the us based mnc i used to work on linux form over there to handle the windows administration part over there and uh, i have also worked with uh, one of the company like bank of america the convergis convergis was my first company and in evision what i am doing in evision i am handling the part time training you can say i am associated here as a part time trainer and handling the batches of azure and aws plus devops as well so here i am working as a part time corporate trainer mostly i am available on weekends on saturday sunday not on regular days so that's a brief intro about me so i will be taking your session throughout the journey of azure i am working in the industry i am handling the azure infrastructure for my organization what my organization does so we are giving the support to the european us and canadian customers so we have a big clientele and we have the hybrid cloud model and the on premises model as well so i am working there as a tech solution architect as a solution architect i am responsible for planning designing deployment and l3 level troubleshooting of the issues on the cloud environment so under me i have the team of around 18 engineers who are directly reporting to me they are into the segment of l1 l2 and n3 into azure and aws so on the band level i am on level 5 in my company and that's about me i i cannot go more depth so someone is asking me what will be the timing of classes uh, you can discuss with the admin team uh, we have the slot available i guess in evening on saturday sunday or maybe in morning so you can discuss with the admin team they will tell you about the timings and all in every department in every designation there are some limitations there are some limitations so in the euc level there is a limitation limitation is what you are giving support to the end users you have a big team suppose there is a uh, there are number of users suppose there are 5000 users in the company so in order to handle the 5000 users you have a big team of the desktop engineers so you are easily replaceable in the company replaceable in the sense if company wants they can easily replace you they can easily ask you to leave just resign from the company and tomorrow they can hire any other person because these kind of jobs are easily replaceable they can easily train any other person in your position and start work because in euc we have a lot of team members there is no dependency the work that you are doing someone else will with come uh, will come with the, their experiences and they can also work so that's one of the limitation the next limitation is salary salary growth so salary growth is not very much 30000 rupees is good 35000 rupees is good 40000 is good but if you are thinking that i will earn in lakh of rupees per month so that is not possible with the uc jobs even if you will become the team lead then again you will not be able to earn 1 lakh rupees or more than 1 lakh rupees per month so there is a salary limitation because this particular department is not contributing as much as into the technology 
then comes the growth part so growth part is somehow you can become the senior desktop support engineer senior service desk engineer team lead assistant manager and manager but again there is a limitation N not every one of you will become the manager because in order to become the manager you should have a sound communication skills good command over the english good presentation skills good team management skills so not every one of you will be interested in the management field in future most of you would like to stay in the technical position and in the technical position as i told you in every particular field there is a limitation so here in the euc in your current role there is a limitation of salary growth there is a limitation of creating the dependency if you want that you could not easily get replaceable in the industry so that's not possible in your current job you every one of you are very much aware about this that's the reason you are here in this session that's the reason around we have 44 candidates in this session so it means all of you wants to leave this current position and wants to grow you want to get a job where you will get a good salary good growth stability of job you can create the dependency in the company so that you could not get easily replaceable by your management so that's the reason you are here that's something you are thinking in future so every one of you are very much aware about your current designation your current role your future stability you have seen you have experienced all such things in your company so every one of you know that if you want the stability in your it job then you will have to move into the technology if you want the stability if you want the good salary if you want the uh, growth in your current job in terms of salary in terms of stability in in terms of positions then you will have to move to the technology euc is the part of it infrastructure that you are doing currently desktop engineering is the part of it infra service desk engineering is the part of it infra but you guys are not contributing in terms of any specific technology what is a specific technology specific technology in the sense you are not contributing as a networking engineer you are not contributing as a server engineer you are not the part of any cloud you are not the part of a specific security domain you are not the part of a specific devops domain etc so these are called technology if you will be engineer you are only handling the networking part you are handling the mpls ill sd wan router switches that kind of things you are handling if you become the server engineer you handles the virtualization part of server the windows server environment the linux server environment but if you are working as a desktop engineer so you are responsible for every kind of issues the end user the employee of the company they can face any issue they can face issue in their wifi they can face issue while login they can face issue in their operating system so you guys are the generalized kind of people means we are the generalized engineers i am not very good with the spelling actually my spellings are very pathetic uh generalize yeah whatever so we guys are like a generalized engineer generalized means we know each and everything but we are not master into it we just know the superficial kind of things we have the knowledge about everything but we are not expert in anything so if we are not expert in anything it means the chances of growth becomes very less if you are not master in a particular skill then the chances of growth becomes very less so when we talk about the technology so you need to choose a specific technology so that you can pick that you can work on that and you can grow in every technology job there is a growth if you become the network engineer there is a growth if you go for the server engineering there is a growth if you go for the cloud there is a growth if you go for the security and devops there is a growth but looking at our current role what we are doing currently it is very difficult to move into the networking it is very difficult to go for the server level jobs so what is trending in the market nowadays we should pick that one so that we can easily move into the euc background to the technology 
so the trending parts are cloud it's trending in the market then devops is very much trending in the market the orchestration part it's very trending in the market artificial intelligence is booming nowadays machine learning is booming nowadays data science is also booming nowadays for us uh, because we are the part of it infra team so we guys cannot directly move into the data science business analyst kind of people the operation management kind of people they can go for the data science role for this you should have a good mathematics the good algo skills we cannot directly go to the machine learning and artificial intelligence because we don't have any programming background in order to switch into these roles you should have the programming background you should know how the linux works you should know the scripting part you should know the programming language the standing of the algorithms then you can switch into this role in it but we are not from that background are uh, the general people who are working into the uc department we don't have any programming background so what we can do we can switch into this particular department this particular department and this one in order to switch into the devops and orchestration you should have prior experience into the cloud but you don't have so what is left you can go to the cloud now so cloud is booming in the market you can easily grab a job in the cloud computing if you have the good skills the right skills then you can easily get a job because almost every organizations are migrating their platform to the cloud what is cloud how they are migrating the things i will discuss in 5 to 10 minutes i will discuss about that so you you can easily pick the cloud computing as your future the salary prospect is very good if you talk about the senior level cloud administrators they are earning around 20 lakh per annums in india in bangalore in delhi ncr pune hyderabad mumbai their base this is the average salary so senior cloud administrators are earning 20 lakh rupees per annum as a package the persons who are working as a architect the person who is a cloud architect the technical solution architect their package for a junior architect is 25 plus 25 lakh rupees per annum plus and the senior architect is paid around 55 lakh rupees 60 lakh rupees per annum so there is a huge salary but yes it's not something that you will do the course and you will get this salary to be very frank if you do any of the courses don't expect that you will get 1 lakh rupees per month for that you need some experience you will have to polish your skills you will have to learn new things then you can expect this 25 lakh rupees 30 lakh rupees 55 lakh rupees so i am on the technical solution architect position but i am not very much senior very much senior into this field so don't assume that i am earning around 50 lakh rupees or 55 lakh rupees per annum that's not the case but yes my package is beyond this level i cannot disclose the exact figure because i am working for different company but yes there is a good salary even we are also earning from additional sources as well as you know we are giving the training so we have additional sources as well so let's start with our cloud computing now let's see how we can start the career in cloud why cloud why cloud computing why everyone is crazy about the cloud so let's discuss about it so what we are going to discuss in today's session we will start with the on premises scenario we will understand what is on premises scenario why every organizations are moving towards cloud computing that's our agenda then we will talk about the cloud computing concept what is this cloud computing all about what are the benefits of having the cloud computing in the company what are the leading market players in the cloud computing then what are the models what are the delivery models and why the company go for the azure as a public cloud solution so i will not take much of your time i will only take uh, 35 to 40 minutes i don't actually i don't take much time of the candidates see let me describe if you will get the interviewer like me <laughs> then definitely your chances of selection will become very less because you know if someone is asking what is cloud computing we should be very explanatory 
and the next question can be what is cloud then so let me discuss let me explain it to you just think about a scenario just forget about cloud just skip from your mind that there is any cloud kind of word just forget about it suppose there is no cloud it's 20 years ago we are talking about in the era of 2000 now suppose we are working in a company we are working in a company it's 2000 it's in the year 2000 in the companies when we talk about any multinational company or any other company suppose we pro hcl ibm whatever they used to have the it infrastructure without it infrastructure the company cannot exist so every company will have the it infrastructure in the it infrastructure what we have in the it infrastructure we will have the router we will have the routers we will have the switches we have the security devices like firewall we have the load balancing application devices we have checkpoints we have database servers we have physical servers in order to manage the power capacity we have the power backups available so we have different different servers we have different different network devices we have different different security devices everything is available everything used to be available in the company premises even you might be working in the company and you might have seen in the organization there is a space there is a room where all the network equipments all the servers all the physical devices will be available so that location is called data center data center means a particular area a particular space where we have the router which is firewall security equipments mpls concentrators we have the physical servers we have the power backups everything we have the humidity sensors so that's called data center and through that data center all the branches are connected to each other that's what we understand right this is our understanding related to the data center yes, yes sir so so in earlier days when there was no cloud what used to happen the companies used to set up the data center they used to set up the data center in their company location whatever connectivity they want to do they need to purchase that particular device if they want to connect all the systems together they need to purchase the router switches if they want to maintain the security they used to have the firewalls they used to have the mpls concentrators for load balancing application they used to have the load balancers as well so they used to have all the physical devices in their premises so that is called traditional data center or on premises data center on premises data center means everything is available in the company premises so this setup this configuration was happening since a long time even nowadays also in some of the companies these kind of infrastructure are still available if the company has migrated to the have the on premises infra available when we talk about the on premises infrastructure so there were there was some limitations actually there used to be some limitations there used to be some demerits just because of that the cloud got invented so what was the limitation what was the demerits let's discuss so if the company is hosting their on premises infrastructure let me give you one of the example to clarify you in a good order in a good order so suppose there is a businessman and that particular businessman wants to start a company so this businessman has a plan to start one of the online shopping company suppose so there is a businessman uh, who has decided to open a online shopping company just like amazon or flipkart in that online shopping company he will sell the products 
he will share, he will sell out the products through website that's what businessman is thinking so he just want to start a company so in order to start the company what he need he need money that's the first thing in order to start any company the businessman needs the money he needs the capital if i want to start any organization i need to fund it i need some funds i need some money if i am a very rich person then i can afford that money if i am not the rich person i will have to take the loan or i will have to take the funds from any other investors so suppose this businessman has a budget of around 1 crore in order to start the company because he wants to start a online shopping company so for the online shopping company what he needs he needs the physical servers he will have to purchase the physical servers so that he can create the web servers in the company he can host the online shopping website so in order to host the services he would need the physical servers in order to purchase the physical servers again we need money capital is required we have to invest in order to connect this physical servers we need networking devices we will have to go with the routers we will have to go with the switches in order to maintain the security we need to purchase the security devices because security is important we are running a online shopping company as a business if someone will hack it then there is a risk so we need the security equipments as well we will have to invest in the firewall we will have to invest in concentrator devices the ids ips devices so there is a huge investment after that we will have to invest in the maintenance there will be ongoing maintenance without maintenance we cannot run this servers we cannot run this network devices and we cannot have the security so in order to maintain these services we need the maintainers for maintainers we need the engineers so again we will have to pay them the salary we need the ventilation ventilation would be required here ventilation in the sense we would be needing ac services 24 cross 7 because that's a data center we need a location where we will set up all these devices together we have to invest in any other asset as well we will have to purchase the furnitures we will have to uh, go with the articles the stuff everything so there is a huge investment in order to start a company for any businessman even the businessman is not sure that whether the company will earn the profit or not we are not sure that whether we are going to earn the profit or not there is no guarantee so there is a risk but before the cloud when the cloud was not into the picture in order to set up any kind of organization in order to start any business we need to invest a lot in the infrastructure we need to purchase the physical equipment so that was the costly thing so the first limitation of traditional infrastructure when the cloud was not there in the market was involvement of capital and operational expenditure in order to set up anything we need to invest in the capex and opex now what is this capex and opex so capex means capital expenditure the biggest expenditure that we have to do in order to run any company so capital expenditure means the initial investment the biggest investment so hardware is the biggest investment we need to invest in the servers we need to invest in the network devices we have to invest in the security equipments cabling would be required so that is the capital expenditure then in order to maintain these services we had to invest in the operational expenditure as well time to time we will have to manage the cooling requirements we will have to give the salary to all the employees who will work as an engineer we will have to bear the maintenance cost because we have the physical servers we have the physical network devices so in order to maintain it we need the amcs we need the warranties of the hardware 
so we will have to pay a lot of money to the vendor every year so that was also one of the expense then there was a compliance cost what is this compliance so when we talk about the big company when we talk about multinational company what happens in multinational company all of you know you might have heard about iso certified companies right have you ever heard about it iso certified Yes, sir. International yes, sir. standard organization. International okay. standard organization. So you might have hear about some standard like nine thousand one, two thousand eight certified company, two thousand one, two thousand nine certified company. So that's what ISO standard. Now, what is this ISO standard? So if you are running a multinational company, because it's a international organization, this organization is not part of India. it's the part of international regions so in order to run the business in a different country just like us companies are running their businesses in india european companies are running their businesses in india so in order to run the businesses in different part of the company they will have to take different different certifications from different different organization so iso is one of that iso is one of the company in us international standard organization that's the full form and this company is responsible for giving the certification to the corporates to the multinational companies and if they are certifying the multinational companies then mnc will have to follow their standards apart from iso certification multinational company will have to go through with the isms certification as well this is related to security international security and messaging services apart from this if the company is running any medical business they will have to take the hipaa certification as well so these organizations these certifications give the standard to the multinational company and every multinational company will have to follow their standards so compliance is what when we talk about the compliance so compliance is a legal term it's a legal term that every company will have to follow so i will give you one or two examples in order to understand the compliance part in order to understand the compliance part i will give you one or two examples uh, just suppose let's take an example of a multinational company any multinational company if they are running any business they cannot keep the old hardwares this is against compliance compliance means legality legal things so any company who is running any business in the market they cannot keep the old hardwares in the company you cannot use 20 years old hardware in the multinational company as a server as a end device in the era of i7 i9 you cannot use dual core processors you cannot use pentium 3 processors in the organization that is against compliance so time to time what happens there are auditors because you are certified because you are certified from these bodies so time to time their auditors will come to the multinational company and they will check the things whether you are following their standard or not if they feel that you are not following up their standard they will charge the penalty on you and if they will feel that you are completely violating the compliance they can cancel your license they can restrict you to run the business in any country so time to time auditors will come and they will check everything so compliance is what compliance is a legal term you cannot use any old hardware in the organization you cannot use any pirated software that's also the part of compliance you cannot download any application from the internet you cannot download any operating system any cracks from the internet you will have to purchase the licenses if any employee is leaving the organization you cannot uh, delete the user account from active directory you will have to keep it disabled for at least 90 days so these all things are the part of compliance so when we talk about the on premises infrastructure so in the on premises infrastructure compliance was the problem we have to maintain the compliance 
we will have to keep everything up to date everything latest and that is again one of the cost after every particular years we will have to change the hardwares if any business is in scz location you might be working in the scz location special economic zone so in the scz location you will have to change the hardware after every 7 years and in some of the location you will have to change the hardware after every 5 years so if you are not in the scz location you can change the hardware after 10 years but you will have to if the companies are using window xp window 7 which has been discontinued from the market then again that is against compliance so there is a cost in order to maintain the co compliance there is a cost time to time you will have to purchase the license softwares time to time if any new window comes in the market you will have to purchase the new window if any new hardware comes in the market you will have to purchase that one so that is also one of the problem there is a audit cost auditors will come to the company you will have to pay the money to the auditors as well then there is an application and os upgradation task if i am using window 8 in my company and if company decides to upgrade window 8 to window 11 then again i will have to purchase window 11 licenses so that is again cost there is a cost involved after the upgradation i will have to invest in the maintenance services as well so for the maintenance again there is a cost so when we talk about the traditional infrastructure which is not on cloud there is a huge cost involved there was the involvement of capital expenditure there was the involvement of operational expenditure so what is capex and opex these are the capex and opex so money is involved then we cannot predict the cost analysis what is this point all about suppose you are running a business yes let's take an example of this businessman he wants to start a online shopping company and he has started this organization today he is getting 10000 users who access the website of this company and do the shopping maybe tomorrow the count may increase and it will be 15000 maybe day after tomorrow it will decrease by 2000 only just take an example of amazon or flipkart during their big billion sales their user base will get increase but after the big billion sales their user count will be decrease so if you are on the traditional infrastructure you cannot do the cost prediction analysis you cannot analyze that what can be my traffic you cannot meet that requirement because you have set up everything physical if your hardware is capable to handle 10000 users and if suddenly 12000 users will come to your website they will not be able to access it because your hardware will be down that's called server down so that was also one of the challenge and because of that there was the business loss if i want to check that if i will run any server for 24 hours for 7 days then how much cost i will have to bear then again no chance because everything is physical i no again rent i cannot analyze the things then there was one more problem there was scalability issue the next term is scalability so what is this scalability all about scalability means today my count my user count on my website is 5000 if tomorrow my count will get increased by 7000 2000 more then i will not be able to handle it because my hardware is not that much capable and day after tomorrow if my count is decrease by 3000 then i don't need much servers so in order to manage the capability if my count is increasing i should be able to handle it if my count is decreasing i should be able to handle it so there is a scalability term in cloud so that scalability is not available in the on premises if the load is increasing your on premises infrastructure is not able to handle it if i have four servers running if i have four physical servers suppose i have four servers in my company 
that four servers are capable to handle 40000 users one server is capable to handle 10000 users and four servers is capable to handle 40000 users so it means 40000 users can regularly come and they can access my website but one on a fine day if there is the increment of 10000 users if in total 50000 users are accessing my website then my hardware is not sufficient to handle that load so that's also one of the problem and in order to give the services to these 50000 users i will have to arrange more servers and that is not possible because i will have to purchase it i will have to purchase the servers i will have to invest in the money so that's not possible in a single day there is a time involved there is a money involved so what happens in the on premises infrastructure this scalability is one of the challenge if my load is increasing i was not able to meet it just take an example of this big billion sales in amazon or flipkart kind of scenario if they are not on cloud they are not able to handle the things then patching and maintenance was one of the problem in the on premises scenario we were not able to uh, we have to manage the patching part we have to manage the update of all the server so again and there is a money involved hardware the on premises were not reliable if any hardware is down it will affect our services slowness was the problem if my server is available in india and my users are available in us so they used to face a lot of slowness and they were unable to access my services so that was also one of the challenge then as i told you we need to take care of whatever are the rules and regulation we used to take care of that as well so that was also one of the cost so these all are the limitations earlier when there was no cloud in the market these all were the limitations the business owners used to face a lot of problems with the on premises companies were facing a lot of challenges with the on premises that's the reason the cloud got invented because of all such limitations the cloud came into the picture so amazon was the first company who introduced the cloud in the market and their cloud was aws amazon web services after that microsoft enters into the picture and microsoft has introduced the azure cloud in the market then google came into the picture and it has introduced gcp cloud in the market then some small business owners some big business owners they also introduce their own cloud like oracle cloud alibaba cloud rack space cloud oci infrastructure tanzu so a lot of cloud got invented in the market but these three are the market giants so amazon was the first in the market who has introduced the cloud computing concept with the aws then microsoft came up with microsoft azure cloud then google come up with gcp google cloud platform so these three are the leaders in the market the companies are heavily relying upon these three clouds and when we talk about the market share so aws and azure are leading these two clouds are heavily used in market so now what is cloud computing so cloud computing is actually very simple thing when we talk about these organization the aws azure and gcp what they have done they have created a big physical infrastructure they have a big physical infrastructure in their own premises amazon have a lot of money so it has invested in a big physical infrastructure in their premises microsoft has a lot of money so it has invested in a big physical infrastructure again same thing with the google so what they have done they have created a massive big infrastructure in that infrastructure they have set up everything they have set up the traditional infra this one they have this kind of infrastructure available in this infrastructure they have done everything they have set up physical servers physical network device physical security device everything and what they are doing now they have a massive 
on premises infra and with this on premises infrastructure they are giving you the rental services they are giving you the services on rent if you need 10 servers you don't need to set them up in your own company you don't need to purchase any physical servers you don't need to buy any network device if you need any storage you don't need to buy it you can simply go to these cloud service providers if you prefer aws you can go to aws if you prefer azure you can go to azure and you can take the services on rent if i need 10 servers for 7 days i can take it on rent i will only have to pay to the cloud vendors for whatever services i will use if i will use the storage service for 7 days and if i will run it for 20 hours every day then i will have to pay it for this particular duration only but if i have the physical infrastructure then if i am using it or not there is a cost involved there is a maintenance cost there is a engineering cost involved but if you are on the cloud you can take the services on the rent from these cloud vendors whatever you need you can just take it on rent and you need to pay for the services that you use that is called pay as you go model so cloud every cloud works on the pay as you go model whatever you will use you will only pay for it so that was the biggest advantage of cloud in the market that's the reason the cloud got invented so when the cloud came into the picture what happened because of cloud the business owners can be cost effective they don't need to purchase any hardware they don't they don't need to invest in any physical infrastructure any network equipments nothing so they don't need to manage and purchase their own infrastructure they can take everything on rent so this was a boon for the small business owners as well a small business owners can start their business with little cost they can take all over the rent we can do the cost prediction analysis with the cloud if i want to check that if i will run any server for 20 hours for four days then what money i will have to pay i can easily check it on the portal with the cloud you get scalability if any load is increasing you can increase the servers if any load is decreasing you can decrease the server on the spot so with the cloud you will get the scalability so this is the biggest advantage to the business owners then it is the responsibility of the cloud vendor they will take care of the patch part they will take care of the maintenance they will take care of the compliance if any hardware is old they will change it if any window has to be upgraded they will do that if any linux has to be upgraded they will do it so you don't need to worry about the maintenance you don't need to worry about the patch part cloud vendor will do it you are just using their services on the rent cloud are reliable it is very much reliable if any server is down it is the responsibility of the cloud vendor to create new server on the spot and to provide you the services they will take care of the data backup part if any data is crash it is their responsibility to give you the data backup cloud has the global presence if your customers are in us you can create your servers in us if your customers are based in asia you can create your servers in asia so it has the global presence cloud has on demand support services whatever you need it will get ready within few minutes not in 2 minutes it will take around 4 to 5 minutes if you want to create 100 of servers it will just be ready within 6 to 7 minutes you just need to pass on the script that's it cloud gives you redundancy and high availability with the cloud if any data center is down still it will not impact your job it you can still get the services from different location because cloud has the global presence it has the data center across globe cloud will help you to reduce the cost of the company now you don't need to invest in the infrastructure you don't need to invest in the cooling requirements no ac no ventilation nothing jobs of the engineer will be out they will be reduced we don't need any network engineer now we don't need any server engineer in the company we can easily terminate them because cloud peoples are handling everything cloud engineers are taking care of the networking part because that's on the cloud 
cloud peoples are taking care of the storage part as well because everything is on cloud so we don't need the separate network engineers we don't need the separate server engineers we don't need the storage engineers so the jobs of other traditional engineers will go away because everything is on cloud nowadays we don't need to take care of the compliance because we are using the services on the rent so whatever legalities has to be followed it will be followed by the cloud vendor means aws azure and gcp will take care of that so we don't need to take care of any kind of guidelines it is just we are using the services on the rent i am living on the rent i am using the house of my landlord and i am paying the rent that's it i don't need to worry about the paintings i don't need to worry about the repairing i don't need to worry about the fixtures same thing applies to the cloud if you are using the services on the rent you don't need to worry about anything and the biggest advantage of using the cloud computing is it works on pay as you go model whatever service you will use you will only pay for it if you are using 100 of servers for one month you will only pay the rent of it you don't need to worry about the hardware change you don't need to worry about the upgradation so this is the biggest advantage after 100 days if my company is running in losses i want to shut down my company i can easily terminate i can easily terminate all the resources i don't need any server now so cloud vendor will not ask me any single question if you want to cancel everything just do it on the spot they will not ask you any single question so cloud is very cost effective actually that's the reason because of all these advantages every organizations are moving towards the cloud computing that's the reason almost every organization whether it is a small organization whether it is big organization everyone is crazy for the cloud because it is helping to save the cost it is cost effective so within two or three years whatever companies are left in the market they will migrate their infra to the cloud even nowadays almost you can say 85% of the company have migrated their infra on the cloud so cloud computing is very much powerful so when we talk about the definition part so what is cloud computing so cloud computing is the delivery of different services through the internet means whatever you need whatever service you need networking storage servers security whatever you need you can access it from the internet how you will access it from the internet so as i told you the cloud vendors have a big data center and they will give you the services on rent through virtualization so if you have the internet you can use the virtualization and you can access the services and you can pay them the rent whenever you want to stop it you can do it whenever you want to create new servers you can do it on the platform so that's what cloud computing is all about so cloud computing is nothing it's just a delivery of different services through the internet so we can use the cloud computing in order to access the application in order to uh, access the data we can use the servers we can use the networking we can run the softwares as well with the help of cloud so that's the advantage of having the cloud everything whatever you need in terms of infrastructure you can take it from the cloud vendor so interviewer whenever you are applying for the interview for cloud computing so you will be asked about the benefits of cloud computing so these are the benefits why the cloud is very much demanded in the market because of these technical differences these advantages so i will share this slide with you uh, you can get it after the session i will ask the admin team to share this details with you so you can have it now types of cloud i will not discuss today uh, you will get bored because uh, we will have to go into the technicalities i will directly come into the picture see when we talk about the types of cloud so in the market we have a lot of clouds nowadays we have microsoft azure we have aws we have gcp we have oracle cloud as well we have ibm cloud alibaba salesforce single hope rack space we have a lot vmware cloud vmware has introduced tanzu so we have a lot of cloud in the market it's not only about aws azure we have a lot 
but companies are mostly using the aws azure and gcp is somehow used it is very less in the market but yes aws and azure is the leaders i have also worked in the oracle cloud oracle cloud is used in the oracle company along with the aws they are using aws plus oracle but their market shares are very less they use it for private purpose so the job prospects are very high for this aws and the azure market so these all are the examples of public cloud in the market now i will not discuss about this private public hybrid i will do it in the class when we talk about azure why we should study azure cloud that's important thing see we as i told you we have two clouds in the market the aws we have and azure we have but why we should prefer the azure why should why we should go with the azure so what happens actually if we talk about aws aws is mostly centric on linux and unix platform it is more centric to the linux and unix platform because it was designed for the small business owners initially it was designed for the small business owners and linux is free so small business owners used to use linux and unix nowadays it is used by the big companies as well but initially it was designed for the linux and unix platform and aws is completely open source open source centric it supports the open source application which runs on the linux and unix platform so that's also one of the thing and in order to work on the aws cloud you should have the strong knowledge of linux and you should have the strong knowledge of scripting frameworks so these things are required so aws is also good in market you can also go with the aws but you should have the sound understanding of linux and unix you should have the sound understanding of open source applications which can run on the linux platform and you should be master in linux plus you should know the scripting otherwise the job market for you guys will be very less you will not be able to get a job in aws if you will only do the course if you have these expertise then you can get the job in aws so i am not saying aws is bad thing i am also supporting aws in company i am working on the hybrid cloud but in order to work on the aws you will have to learn all these things then you can do the aws course then you can get a job in aws so the person who feels that linux is not their cup of tea then they should not go with the aws because in aws mostly the job will be on the linux platform if you feel that i am lying then you can any time go to the nokri.com and you can search for the jobs related to aws if you will search aws administrator jobs in the job responsibility you will see that they are looking for scripting knowledge they are looking for frameworks they are looking for linux knowledge as well apart from aws skill then you will have to learn the terraform as well in order to get the job in aws cloud you will have to learn the terraform as well so terraform is used for the automation if you want to create 200 servers with a single click then company uses terraform so a lot of things you will have to learn in order to get the job in aws cloud but when we talk about the azure so azure is the product of what microsoft it is the product of microsoft and microsoft is leader in the market in terms of their operating system in terms of the operating system in terms of the graphical user interface operating system azure is the market azure is the leader of the market you can say in the world around 90% of the companies are using their windows even you guys are also supporting the windows platform windows 8 windows 10 windows 11 windows server so 90% of the companies are dependent on microsoft for their windows and they are also using their applications like office 365 ms office exchange sharepoint teams so you can practically relate this thing you are working in the company you are giving support to the microsoft platform so microsoft share is very big almost every big organizations they are dependent on the microsoft platform 
and azure cloud is the product of microsoft so azure is very much comfortable with the microsoft applications and with the microsoft os it means the companies who are already running their platform on the windows and they are using the ms office exchange server and office 365 they will go they will prefer the azure cloud over any other provider they will not go with the aws they will go with the azure so that's the reason the job prospect in azure is very good as compared to the aws here you don't need to learn the scripting part you don't need to be very expert in the linux you need to be good in the windows server administration you need to be very good in the azure cloud then you can easily grab a job so that's the reason you should learn the azure so user base of microsoft operating system and application is very high in the market it's 90 percent azure gives you the application compatibility for the legacy platform means if someone is using old version of ms office in their company azure will support it azure gives the better integration with the microsoft products if the company is using the microsoft application the microsoft operating system azure is very good for that right because microsoft application and microsoft os will be compatible with the microsoft cloud biggest advantage of having the azure is azure will charge their customer on per minute basis whereas aws charge on hourly basis it means if i am using any of the server on azure platform and if i run it for 7 hours then azure will charge me for 7 hours if i am running it for 15 minutes then azure will charge me for 15 minutes but if i am using aws and if i use any server for 15 minutes then aws will charge me for complete 1 hour it will not charge me for 15 minutes because aws does not charge on minute basis it charge on hourly basis whereas azure will charge you on minute basis so it is very cost effective azure have the more data center in the entire world you can google it and you can see that azure have the largest data center in the world than any other cloud provider although it is second in the market but still aws could not compete in terms of region availability aws has the azure has the largest region in the market it has around 130 plus region in the market whereas aws only have 75 plus azure is very much compatible with the hybrid cloud it means the company who are using different different cloud platforms if they are using aws as well azure as well then azure is very much compatible with both the cloud you can run multiple clouds in the company and azure will offer the services accordingly Azure can easily integrate with any other cloud platform, whether it is Linux, whether it is window, Azure can easily adopt it. But AWS mostly works with the Linux platform. It does not give the better support to the Microsoft. It gives the better support to the Linux community. There is a lift and shift capability in Azure. Lift and shift capability means if you are hosting any on-premises infrastructure, then you can easily migrate the application on the cloud without wasting so much time that is called lift and shift capability so you can use the tools and you can easily migrate the infrastructure to the azure cloud environment so because of these benefits the azure is leading in the market job prospect of azure is very high nowadays even if you will compete it with the aws so in earlier days aws job was booming but uh, since last three years, the Azure job is in high demand because of the Microsoft base and because of these kind of limitation. Like, as I told you, we will get a lot of benefits if we will adopt the Azure in company. So the company who are earlier working on AWS, they are also shifting towards the Azure. I will give you one of the example of a company. There is a company called Sapient. So Sapient was earlier using the AWS in their infra, but uh, last year they migrated their complete platform to the Azure because in AWS, they were, they were not getting the good support from the AWS providers. So Azure job is good in the market. You can easily get it. You don't need to 
uh, we very much expert in this scripting part in Linux part and all. You just need to be very good in Windows Server platform. You can learn the Azure cloud and you can be the Azure engineer in future. So that's what Azure is all about. The benefit of learning the Azure from the eVision would be in eVision because I will be training you on this particular concept on this particular curriculum. So as I told you, I am the industry expert. I'm working with the company. I'm not the full time trainer in this organization. So I know what are the ins and outs. Ins and out means I know very well that what kind of questions will be asked in interview. What is the real scenario? What kind of issue comes as a Azure administrator? How will you fix that? And during the interview, the interviewer will focus on the troubleshooting skills. You can learn the cloud from the YouTube as well, but uh, you will not get the job because you don't have the practical exposure. So in order to get the practical exposure, you will have to work. But how will you start the work? So you should get the opportunity. And in order to get the opportunity, you should have that skill set so that you can attract the interviewers. So you should know how the thing works, how the real infrastructure works, how the issue comes and how you will handle it. How will you fix it? What is the traditional Azure infrastructure looks like? You should know all the things. So that's what I will be dealing with because I'm working in the industry. So I know very well what kind of segments are there, what kind of verticals are there. So if you are the part of this particular organization, in terms of your Azure course. So along with the Azure, along with the course, we have the customized program for Windows Server because without Windows Server, you cannot work on the Azure platform. Along with that, we have the migration part because in interview, they will discuss about the migration part as well. You should know the migration part. And we have the troubleshooting part here. Without troubleshooting, your chances of selection is very zero. You can say you cannot expect any selection if you don't have the real troubleshooting skills. So if you talk about the slavers, here is the slavers. So we will be learning these steps. You will get this slavers from the admin team. We will be discussing about the production issues, the cloud administration related troubleshooting. The interview is the part of this one job responsibility highlighters we have to discuss on the server section we have to discuss about the migration part this is a customized tool azure ad connect for migration so we will have to discuss this one we have to discuss about arm template apart from this we have the complete azure syllabus the complete azure infrastructure syllabus this one so this will be shared with you this is a customized syllabus. It's not like uh, you are doing the Azure course. It's a job readiness program completely. The placement assistance would be provided to you. It's same like your OJT. But in OJT, you have uh, only learned the superficial things. You have only learned the definition and uh, some of the practicals you have done. But in order to get the job in technology, you will have to understand the skill set. You will have to learn the things in depth. So if you are planning to become the Azure administrator or cloud admin in future, then you can go through with this one. So what designation you will get after getting selected in the organization. So you will be getting the designations as cloud administrator. You can get the designation as Azure administrator. There can be designation of system admin of Azure or system admin of cloud. Then you can get the designation as cloud operations analyst. So these kind of designations you will be getting. It depends upon company to company what designation you are getting, but you will be purely working on the cloud platform. You will not be giving the support to the employee. In the desktop level jobs, you are giving the support to the employees of the company. In technology job, you will never give the support to the employees of the company. You always give the support on the server level. So you will be supporting the cloud server technology, not the end user technology. So you will get rid of this EUC part. Salary prospect will be higher as I told you. Even you can also Google search it and you will get to know what kind of salary the Azure people, the AWS people are earning in the market. You will have an idea. And one more thing, 
these all jobs will be direct payroll with the company it's not like your third party job that you are currently doing so currently you are with the partner payroll but in the technology job you will not be on the partner payroll you will be in the direct payroll of the company so evision is going to take care of the placement part it is also like a placement guaranteed program whereby we will go through with each and everything each and every practical each and every concept that will help you to get the job as a cloud administrator and that will be with the direct payroll payroll of the company in the technology there is no job which is third party every job will be with the direct payroll so lokesh is asking a question can we move from cloud admin to devops in future yes in order to become the devops engineer you should have the experience on cloud without cloud you cannot work on devops because devops is completely on the cloud when we do the development operation we do it on the cloud platform so you should have the experience on any of the cloud platform then you can switch to the devops field so you can even if in future you wants to move to the kubernetes platform the aks the orchestration then you can also do it but you should have prior experience of the cloud so you can do it but don't expect that you can go to the machine learning or artificial intelligence or data science you cannot go into that field if you have the cloud experience from cloud you can become the solution architect the senior solution architect or in case you want to become the devops engineer you can do the courses in devops and you can apply for the devops as well devops is also very trending in the market but in order to become the devops engineer you should have the experience on real cloud so you cannot directly apply for the devops devops it's not about azure or dev azure or aws you can pick any of the cloud see there are three kind of devops there is a open source devops which is very much famous for open source devops you can have the experience in any of the cloud whether you are the aws person whether you are the azure person you can learn the devops tool like ansible terraform git the chef the terraform and the deployment kubernetes so you can learn this orchestrations and you can apply for this but there is a specific azure devops which is becoming very much popular in the market this is the world's best devops nowadays the azure devops so in order to become the azure devops engineer you should have the experience on the azure cloud platform you cannot be from the aws background in order to work on the azure devops you should have the azure devops background only then we have the aws devops as well which is not very much popular aws devops is fail in the market it's not very much used even the aws the company which is on aws cloud they are using the open source devops they are not using the aws devops so you should not do this one in future you can go for these two either you can go for the open source the open source devops person can manage this two as well but if you are corely into the azure devops then you would be able to manage the azure devops function and azure devops is very much popular nowadays people are getting a lot of salary but again the cloud experience would be required what should be minimum and maximum age for this uh, there is no age criteria actually it's it is not something like your wipro kind of job so anyone from whatever age group they can enter into the technology field so we can wrap up the session now and hope to see you in the class so we will start the class uh, in the first weekend of july means the first weekend first saturday of july we are going to start our first class so let's wrap up for the day now thank you very much for your time